start? I mean, how did that feel tonight? You know, it, it felt really good. I tried not to focus on the outcome, and I tried to really focus on the process. Um, what did I want to do at each moment of the fight? Where could I keep advancing? You know, and I chose position over, you know, taking too much of a risk. Um, and I knew that if I stayed solid and I stayed smart and one step ahead of her, that I was going to get my hand raised. I mean, it, it felt like, just from watching it on, on, on the screen, there was a definite game plan there. I mean, you put her on the ground constantly, and then yeah, and then you just keep it there. So even before I went out, I thought, what is there a girl on the planet in my weight class that I'm not going to be able to take mm -hmm. down? And I'm like, no. It may not be the first takedown or second or third, but if I want someone to go to the ground, they're going to the ground. Because I do that to wrestlers who are in a stance that are the best in the world. So none of these girls, like in a higher level, higher stance for striking, they're not going to be able to stop it. If I touch them and I want them to go to the ground, they're going down. It, did in some ways did it feel like kind of like getting back on the bike out there? I mean, was it just very natural? No. Because, yeah. Did, did you feel? Nope. I did not feel. I know. I do believe that sometimes like ring rust is mm -hmm. real. Um, but I felt completely at home out there. I felt like, I don't know, I thought if I, you know, I've been doing this for 25 years and if I don't know how to compete by now, I don't know when I'm gonna learn, you know? So it's a, it's a long time and really um, going out there with, cause I've had years of training out, you know, out at Alpha Male, Alpha Male and I didn't, um, I didn't really turn that switch off. I didn't stop training. So I never stopped advancing my career. The scorecards say it was pretty easy for you. I mean, did she hit you with anything while you were in there that that, that made you take any kind of pause and say, okay, we got to adjust something here? Yeah, um, she caught me. She hit a pretty good liver shot. She kicked uh, her kick, and I was like, hmm, yeah, I don't like that. Next time she does that, I'm catching it and taking her down. You know, I'm like, any more legs come towards my middle, and you know, and that's and that's anybody. I don't care who you are. You know, you can't really train your liver, so. Um, you know, but she hit like a, a nice kick it, so. But, and I was aware of the elbows too. She's called the elbow queen. So I was like, she's gonna be looking for him everywhere. And those things can cut. She's a, you know, Muay Thai world champ. So I respected them. How crucial was it to make sure you got a win here tonight? I mean, I'm not saying like, had you lost, you would have said, well, that's it. I was off for two years, I lost, and now I'm gonna retire. But, but does getting a win just make sure that that's not even close to the equation? No, so, um, it was important for me to to go out there and do well. I really feel like in my last two fights that I lost, I was doing really well. It's not like I went out there and, and anybody dominated me, but I think that the biggest thing for me was I have better focus than what I showed. Um, I was doing really well and I had a judgment lapse, an error. I just got off focus for just enough and I paid a hefty price for it. I didn't just get hit. You know, I got taken down and finished, and so, or the other one I got, you know, I, I let her get too deep on a good area, and for me, it was like, I can't ever have lapses of focus like that. I, I'm better than that, and I expect better of myself, and so that was a really important thing for me more than the win. I think it all about uh, how soon you want to get back in there after being out for almost two years, and, and then maybe the, the type of opponent or any particular name that you want next? So. I right now like even even after the fight has like uh, passed a little bit my adrenaline's not the same like I feel really good like I feel like I did not take very much damage and so um, I'll go back I'll talk to my coaches the UFC they do right by me they're gonna give me a tough opponent they never give me easy fights and and I don't want it that way so I know that they're gonna keep their eye out and they're gonna put me against someone tough and I'll go back and see how I feel and see what things I need to correct because it doesn't matter how much, you know, how well I did. I'm a human, I make errors and I need drills and I need my coaches to correct me. And, um, but if I could fight, like if I'm healthy and I can fight three months from now, I would love that. I would love to keep fighting more frequently. And the top five obviously has a lot to do with climbing your way back to the position where you can challenge for a title. So for me, that's the reason why. Because I always want to keep like fighting the toughest people. You know, like I'm not out here. If I if I wanted to go with like people who were, you know, not on my level, I would just go and train with people, and I, I do it casually. But if you really want to be in the the best organization for fighting, you have to want to be against those girls. You have to want them to put challenges in front of you, and then. 
you know, feel like, oh man, I'm like, this opponent's really tough, you know, like I'm going to have to really be good in this area or this area, but, and then you work your ass off into that, you know, and so it may, it forces me to grow really well, and that's what I want. So, <clears throat> you obviously had kind of a long layoff here. How do you just feel about the division in general? I mean, we just spoke about you want to get back to the top, obviously. Yeah. Where do you see yourself in it? How do you think the division's changed in the last little bit here? I think that, like, it's, besides, you know, like, we ha obviously have a good dominant champion, but, you know, past the champion, all the contenders, like, it really is about matchups. Like, so a lot of girls have been doing really well, and then they have a different matchup, and then they have a loss. So everybody has, like, some wins and losses. There's no... I don't feel like there's a real clear contender. And so that means it's up to me, you know, to to stand out. And is there any thought at all? Um, might be a little tougher to make your way to fight Amanda Nunes through the 135. 145, fairly a hoop in as well. So is that is so, considered either of those? I don't consider 45 only because I... Like, I keep my weight under control, and I, I walk around at 145. Like, I stay close to my fight weight. I don't cut a ton of weight. It makes me recover really well, and I feel great out there. Um, so I wouldn't go where I know that the, the girl possibly weighs around 160 by the time we fight. 145 is just, it's just too big. It, it, it'd be me accepting a disadvantage. So I'd rather stay at 135, and even if I have to work a little harder to get there, it's the right weight class for me. You mentioned that you paid a lot of uh, attention to recovery and things like that during this camp. Uh, did that help you get through unscathed and, and fit and healthy coming into the fight? Yeah, I think that like as you get older, like when I was in my 20s, I, I just would recover quicker, you know, and that's just something that you, I can't pretend that I'm a 20 year old fighter and I'm not, you know, like I'm not a 30 year old fighter. but. The hard, like everybody at the Olympic Training Center, and they, they really beat us into it, that this mentality is that overtraining is worse for performance than undertraining is. So if I had to err on either way, it would be getting just a little too much recovery rather than too little, because you'll just start to run yourself into the ground. And, you know, at, at, at 39, I need every single advantage I can get. You know, like I know I'm competing against younger girls and I want to continue to compete against younger girls, but in any way I can kind of level that playing field and I can get a smarter recovery. I don't need, I don't need as much experience. I have that. I don't need, to, I'm not learning anything from scratch. Every single MMA move has pretty much been exposed to me in the 10 years I've been doing it. What I need to do is refine it. I need to do it right and I need to push my body and then I need to let it heal. And then I need to push my body and let it heal because I fight one per night. I don't fight tournaments. So I think that you can, you can maintain that level if you're smarter about your training than just coming in and working hard. Congrats. Thank you. Congratulations, Sam. Thanks.